Hi guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to have a look at something a little bit different, a little bit old school if you like. Now, if you're anything like me, when you're trolling the internet, I do a lot and a lot of searching for new releases, new guns coming out, new airsoft replicas on the market. And it can be a bit tricky at times. One, because manufacturers don't tell you when their guns are coming out, or they do, and then they release them six months later. And then you throw in things like COVID and whatever else, and it causes a nightmare. So very often it can be tricky to try and preempt this. So you do a lot of time searching, 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 checking out new releases, checking out what's coming into stock, what's going out, what's on pre-order. And this can be tricky at times. I've got several guns on pre-order that doesn't look like they're arriving anytime soon, even though they should be out. Now, this can cause you a bit of a problem, but at the same time, when I'm searching these websites, I tend to come across sales a lot. And you always look and you see sale or end of line or clearance, whatever it might be. And there's a few different types of sales that I've found. One is a genuine sale. So you get like the Black Friday sales. Uh, if you look in the right place, you can find the odd bargain now and again. Uh, certainly last year, some, some great uh, offers out there for, for Black Friday. Then you've got the all year round sales that just are never not sales. So there's one particular website that uh, I've been on recently, or go on now and again, I won't name any names, but ever since this website started up some years ago, it has never not been on sale. Every single one of their products is on sale every single day and has never been any different, which is an odd kind of sale because that's sort of just not on sale, it's normal. And then finally, you've got the end of line stuff. So last few available, going out of production, whatever it might be, uh, old stock. And then you can sometimes pick up a bargain and sometimes not. It just depends on what you're getting, which throws us into today's video and what I'm looking at here. This is not a new gun, but it is quite an unusual gun. And it's not something I see around very often. In fact, it's pretty rare, to be honest. I don't think I've ever seen anyone using one of these on the field. Um, I'm sure they've been around there, but they have just not just jumped out at me. And that is the XCR Robinson Armament um, Assault Rifle. And this is actually made by VFC. And I got this very cheap, simply because there was only a couple left and they wanted them gone. And I got this incredibly cheap for what essentially it might be, but it depends what's in the box. Uh, this is not a new gun by any means. It's been around for a long time, but like I say, it's quite rare. It's not something you see around very often. And it's a bit of a gamble. And uh, you'll see why it's a gamble in a minute when I open it up. Obviously being from VFC, it's gonna have full external trades, well-built externals, and quite possibly internals made of cheese. So what we'll do is we'll have a look. So this is the uh, XCR from Robinson Armament, or VFC, should I say, and this is the L version. So it's not the uh, micro version, which is really short, and it's not the long version either. Now there's two people made these, there's VFC, and also Echo One made a polymer version with a version two gearbox, but I'm not interested in that. We're only interested in this. So let's have a look what's inside. And like I said, I got this as an end of line. So inside the box, there it is. It's the tan version. And God knows how long it's been floating around in here, but even the instructions have started to go yellow, assuming they weren't already. So uh, small instruction booklet, quite old fashioned. Just shows you the gun, shows you how to select fire, how to use the bolt, hop up, stock, an exploded diagram which I always like and you may have noticed something if you're quick about the gearbox down here it's actually a split gearbox so pretty proprietary uh, piece of kit this is it's not your regular version 2 gearbox so that could either be interesting or a complete nightmare inside here we have a magazine and we have sights, iron sights, and these are, interestingly, uh, Hitler and Cox style iron sights. So that's your front sight, and that's your rear sight. Wow, is that straight off an MP5 or a G3 or what? And finally, we have the replica itself. So let's get this bad boy out and have a look what it's actually like. 
and here it is complete with its stock folded so if we unfold that now there we go that is the XCR in its full glory so what have we actually got here this is a full metal replica it's got an aluminium upper receiver it's monolithic it's all one piece we've got an aluminium lower receiver now I've seen people claim these to be plastic but this one is 100% aluminium so uh, yeah I've seen people say these have polymer low lowers on them but this is an aluminium one uh, so yeah whatever M4 style grip if we flip it over we've got full trades so you see the XCR logo on there if we flip it back you've got the Robinson armament trades there uh, we've got our charging handle which does lock back and can be released a bit like the ACR at the bottom there not particularly uh, nice release it's quite scratchy and gritty I'm sure we can sort that out now if nobody's ever heard of this gun before that's not necessarily surprising uh, this was in competition with the SCAR and the ACR so this gun was actually released uh, or at least it was presented to the US in 2008 and uh, it was to as a replacement for the M4 carbine and there was this the um, ACR and I believe the SCAR as well and as it happens this was not uh, taken on by SOCOM but it was kept around and it was put into service for different law enforcement and it was on offer to different law enforcement and as a result it's still around today and in the, very much the same way as the Magpul Masada or ACR depending on which particular one you're talking about either the Bushmaster or the Magpul version and so yeah these are this is around the same kind of uh, time so the features on this gun we've got this rather bulbous charging handle we've got a very interesting selector switch which is only a 90 degree switch so that's semi and that's full auto uh, it is a conventional style trigger unit there's nothing fancy here as it's an older model that's your semi and that's your full auto so yeah it just feels like a normal mechanical trigger switch nothing too fancy there we've got this quite a nice quality folding stock it's uh, aluminium tubes with a foam cheek pad on there and to fold it in all you do is you press down on top there swing it round. it doesn't lock in place it just folds to the side and it's simply for transportation because if you swing it out it'll move again um, so that is literally just for moving it around you wouldn't use it in that that configuration on the front you've got plenty of picatinny rail on the top side and underneath and this screw at the bottom releases the outer barrel so you can actually pull the barrel out and uh, swap it out take the hop up unit and everything out a little bit in the same way as it works with the acr or the masada also similarly similarly to the masada you've got this bolt release down there which is by the trigger and we've got a single-sided magazine release as well you also get the standard stanag style mag with it which fits very securely with zero wobbles or movement around it's actually fitting really nicely the hop up on this is a rotary style hop up as you can see in there oddly you push it up to apply hop and down to take it off which is opposite for most guns but there you go and we can also see we've got a nice coated cylinder let's get these stupid stickers off impressions of this thing it is light it is very very light considering this is a full uh, metal receiver and lower it's extremely light and it feels super solid there's next to nothing rattling anything rattling there is a little bit of movement in the gas block at the front and I think that's because the grub screw is not done up at the bottom so that will be easily remedied um, the charging handle feels horrible it's very gritty and grindy and the bolt release is also nasty as well um, it's, it's just stiff just doesn't, doesn't want to move but I'm sure we can do something about that when we take it apart we've got our iron sights on which look pretty cool mag release and the mag well are solid uh, no problems there but it's all m4 stuff you know it's all ar style there's nothing to be surprised by but this feels really good it feels nice to show it actually feels extremely narrow so if you look at this gun it is actually it's got a very narrow profile to it which is interesting and i'm not entirely sure why the grip feels very narrow as well 
So I'd say that's not a standard motor in there. It doesn't feel like it could be, to be honest, because it feels like a, a gas blowback rifle when you hold it. It really does feel like a gas blowback rifle because it's so narrow. So this will be quite interesting. Now, what we want to do is try it with the battery. So let's stick a 7.4. This is a weak 7.4, uh, 25C, 14.50 milliamp. It's nothing special. And we'll see what it's like. As there's no BBs in it, we can take the mag out to prove it. And we've got semi. And we've got full auto. So it's a bit laboured, let's face it. That is not going to uh, set the world alight. <laughs> it is a pretty laboured uh, turnover. And it's very reminiscent of some of the older guns used to get. So, uh, yeah, not too impressed with that. But I'm sure we can do something about it. That's not something I consider to be a problem. Uh, obviously, if you're not into teching, then it's more of a problem because then you've got to get somebody else to sort it out if you don't want to do it yourself but there's nothing wrong with it what we will do is we'll try 11.1 on at some point i have got 11.1 to try but unfortunately this is on tamiya connectors and we've got to put it on dean's first but all in all it feels really nice the magazine i have to say is quite cheap um i don't think that's steel i've got a magnet in my pocket no it's not steel i don't think it feels like a it feels plastic but it's not it's actually aluminium but uh, it is quite a cheap mag uh, nothing to shout about so fortunately though the mag isn't a huge problem because it is compatible with pts mags and they look the part and they also drop nicely we've got an octorus mag no that is not going to fit in that's out of the hk416 a5 we've got one of the pts copies and that fits perfectly as well so mag compatibility is going to be pretty decent this was a bit of a, a chance to be honest i'm not surprised that doesn't fit so yeah mag wise you shouldn't have any problems okay so we're using 0.2 gram bbs 302 309 309 308 308 309 306 307 309 that is actually pretty consistent actually but it's a little bit on the low side but it's certainly usable i have to say the selector switch is a bit spongy And we've got 618 rounds per minute, which is pretty, pretty slow, but not the end of the world and is easily fixed. Like I say, this is a little bit on the spongy side. Could be a little bit more positive, but again, I'm sure it's easily sorted. So these are the results as you can see it's not earth shattering it's nothing too amazing but it was throwing 0.28 down range pretty easily um quite a few of them went around the center line but as you can see there's quite a few flies as well but it wasn't bad it was shooting straight enough certainly plenty skirmishable um and i think with a few tweaks we could get it a lot better depending on that hop it is a proprietary hop so I want to see what type of hop it is. It looks almost like a, a G36 hop, but uh, I guess we'll find out when we take it apart. One thing I'll say about it though, is it was hopping 0.28 quite easily, which is nice to see in a standard hop. Some of the uh, older hops, particularly hop rubbers, they don't like to lift 0.28, so they can get quite upset about it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's nice to see, although we will be making some improvements to that hopefully, and uh, we'll see what we can do with it because this, is an oldish gun. I've got it cheap, as I said in the video. So the idea is now, can we put a few little upgrades in there just to make it better and bring it up to a current standard? And uh, that is what I'm quite interested in because let's face it, this cost me £180 roughly, with conversion. Um, I think they used to be near the £300 mark when they were new. So it is a big discount. Uh, we can buy guns for two between two and two twenty that are really good, but still require a little bit of upgrading. And you do look at something like the Actorus I had there. I've already changed the barrel on it, 
change the hop, a few bits and pieces in there. So I'm only going to be doing the same to this. So they ask, the question is, can you buy an older airsoft gun and make it you know, pretty good for the similar kind of price as the new stuff coming out? And that's what we're going to try and do with this now. Okay guys, so I don't know much about this particular uh, model from BFC. Um, it's a bit of a mystery to me. So this is going to be a new one. I know it's got a split gear, sorry, split uh, gearbox, top and bottom. Uh, I know it's got a proprietary hop of some description. I uh, don't know whether it's compatible with anything else. And uh, the only real thing I've heard about these is sometimes the wiring harnesses can be a bit ropey. So we're going to open it up. We're going to have a look at this and see what we can do with it. Because I'm really interested. I actually really like this this model of gun. I like the fact it's so narrow. It feels so light and manoeuvrable. It's really, really nice externals. So I want to know if I can do something with the internals and, and make it a bit better and uh, see if it's upgradable and if we can make give it a bit more finesse because it's a bit rough and ready at the moment uh, just squeeze a bit more performance out of it and see where it goes so fingers crossed Stupid springs on the gears. Oh, you'll be able to see them. Three weeks, three weeks later, this is. So, <laughs> what actually has gone on? So I took this apart and started to put it, started to redo the shimming, ran into all kinds of trouble. I had to change the gears, because I had those stupid VFC gears where they put the springs on as the shims. They are not shims, they are not a good idea. I don't care who says, you know, you may not agree with me. But as far as I'm concerned, they're stupid. They're not proper shimming. The gears have way too much movement in them to, to mesh properly. And I just hate those springs that, you know, you can't beat proper shims. So I got rid of those, but I put some 13 to one gears in. It took ages to get it shimmed properly because it's an odd motor. It's a half size motor. It's not a long, it's not a short, it's actually a half. And so yeah it's been there's next to no movement in the motor height very little adjustment so to get the shimming just right you can shim it not a problem you can get your gears running freely you put the gearbox back together and it interferes with the tappet plate so then you have to shave down the tappet plate but you've got to find these problems and go through it and go over and strip it down the gearbox is fragile so you've got to be careful with it it's not the strongest um, i did actually end up drilling out um the gearbox threads and putting heli coils in there because it was just going to i could see them stripping at some point because i've taken it apart putting it back together uh rewire the whole thing very fiddly trigger switch the trigger trigger switch assembly is not the greatest of an eye a bit wobbly but anyway went through absolute hell and back to get this thing working put it all together zero compression so <laughs> had a look the tappet plate was still binding on the one uh on the one part of the gearbox um, because of the shimming, it was pressing the, the tappet plate. So took it out again, shaved a little bit off the tappet plate, 
didn't want to reshim because I knew if you shimmed it properly, the problem was if you shimmed it properly, it took up the room, the tappet plate, because it's a very narrow gearbox. If you shimmed it in proper, then it would free up, but then the gearbox would sound like a bag of nails. So eventually we fine fettled it, fine tuned it, took ages. And the reason it's not on film is it took hours and hours. I've probably put four days into this, this uh, AEG, messing around with it to try and get it right. But we got there in the end and we got it back together and we got the compression as well. What was happening is as it was cycling, it wasn't letting the tap plate move forwards. It was loading the BB, but it wasn't creating an air seal and the BB wasn't getting out the barrel. So you imagine it was just stopping short or just touching the rubber or getting there a little bit late and it wasn't giving it full compression. So it's back together. We've still got 300, 300 FPS, but it's more consistent. I do want to put a bend nozzle in here. It has got an O-ring in the plastic nozzle, but it doesn't seal very well. In fact, it seals worse than some non-O-ring nozzles, so work that out. But we got it back together, and it's here. So, what have I done to it? I've put a gate wall fet in it. I've rewired it. I've stuck the battery and the wall fet inside the fake battery pe pec box. Not the most elegant um, way of housing a battery. I'd have preferred one to put one in the, in the back here, but I just couldn't find the battery I wanted with the output that I wanted to really work with this done gun. I haven't changed the motor. It's still got the standard motor in there. I would like to put an upgraded motor in, but they can be quite hard to come by and I've got one for it at the moment because it's that half motor again. Um, I've put the 13 to one gears in there, re-shimmed it. It's shimmed really nicely now and uh, I haven't done anything else to it. Uh, I'm going to do something to the barrel and I'm going to change the hop. It's actually hopping really well. I was trying it today. It does hop well, even with the standard hop in there. So I'm hoping with something like a maple leaf or maybe a TNT, it should be even better. And I'll put a slightly longer barrel in just to sit inside the suppressor. But now, if we put it onto semi, it is empty. There are no BBs in here. So that's why I'm not wearing iPro. It actually sounds pretty nice. And we've got pre-cocking. So it's working really well and on full auto. Not bad at all. So I'll take that. So by the time we've got this with a decent barrel in, I actually think it's been going to be pretty good. Now I've dressed it up a little bit. I've put a couple of accessories on there. We've got a flashlight. We've got a suppressor on the front and we've got our fake peg box right there. And oh yeah, and yeah, can't, can't forget that. And now it feels actually really good. It's actually a really nice um, AEG to hold. It shoulders nicely. It's really, really, I wouldn't like to say, I don't think it's necessarily balanced, but it just feels short. It feels light. For an all metal AEG, it feels light and quite nimble and quite controllable. I just like it. It feels really nice. Would I recommend anyone buying this? Unless you're really into teching, God no. Steer clear. Don't even go near it, even if it's going for dirt cheap money. Uh, if you're not into teching, don't touch it. It's going to be a nightmare. If you are into teching and you fancy a little bit of a challenge, then go for it. It's, it's a fun gun, but just be aware. Be careful with it because if you break anything, you ain't going to get replacements anytime soon. They're hard to come by because it is an older model. It is incredibly proprietary with some of the parts in there, except for the gears and the the, I don't think the tappet plate's proprietary, um, the gears aren't proprietary, uh, the anti-reversal latch I don't think is, it's just in a different place. Um, the piston uh, cylinder and piston head are definitely not proprietary, they are all standard version 2 gearbox. Um, the hop is incredibly proprietary and obviously the barrel isn't. But it's a, it's a shame because this thing is actually really cool. If it was built a little bit better, VFC could have had one major uh, piece of kit here with a good motor, a decent MOSFET with a bit of pre-cocking on there. This is actually quite a cool rifle. But before you do all that, it's not the best, if I'm honest. Um, it did okay. It did all right, but it's, it was lackluster. It was boring. The, the rate of fire, the trigger response was lazy. But yeah, all in all, I'm really glad I've got it. I really love this rifle, but... Oh, it's tried to kill me. I'm sure it's made my hair go much greyer since I've started uh, messing with this. One thing that is sorted now is the charging handle. It's much nicer. It actually locks back. Uh, well, it locked back before, but it actually goes forwards a bit nicer than it did before. And uh, yeah, it feels, feels much better now. That's just a bit of lube. I didn't actually do anything to it. I just put a bit of uh, silicon grease on the rails of the charging handle. Uh, it works a bit better now. It's... Uh, 
a bit nicer. So yeah, all in all, I'm actually looking forward to using this now. Uh, there was a moment while I was working on it, I was thinking, why am I doing this? Shall I throw it in a box and then come back to it another day? I had a bit of a break, came back to it and thought, no, crack on, and uh, you get there eventually. So yeah, I thought, I thought, just for a brief moment, it may have beaten me, but there's still only one gun that's done that from SRC, and that was an MP5. Um, so no, this has come through and it's all right now. And I think when it's got a, a slightly tighter barrel in there, I think it's gonna be a bit of a mean machine actually. I think it's gonna be a bit of a sleeper, this one. So yeah, that is my XCR build, uh, complete with a custom battery case. Uh, if anyone wants to know about that, that's just a bog standard eBay special for about a tenner. Uh, I've just painted it up to look a little bit uh, a little bit more interesting than standard, just to make it look a little bit more realistic because it looked a bit rubbish and standard. But uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, if anyone wants to see more of sort of customizing stuff like this, then give me a shout and I can always put a couple of videos up of how to do it, but you do need an airbrush. So that's it guys, that is the XCR. I wouldn't recommend it unless you're into teching and you fancy a bit of a challenge, then it is definitely good for that if you can pick it up for the right money. Don't ever pay full price for one, only ever buy it in the sales if you do. And uh, away you go. The externals are really well built. This barrel fits in here like you wouldn't believe it's so snug, it's ridiculous. I wish every uh, AEG was made the same way because the precision is spot on. It's absolutely spot on. The, all the external component parts are really well done except for the fire select switch which is a bit grubby. But the rest of it's amazing. Uh, if you fancy a challenge or you're bored and you really wanna get your teeth stuck into something a little bit different, it's perfect. If you're new to the game, you've never really done any teching, don't even consider it. Uh, run to the hills and get something else, I really mean that. Um, because if you do have a problem or you want to upgrade it or anything else, it's going to be hell. So uh, yeah, you need to be a bit mechanically minded for this one. But all in all, I'm looking forward to giving it a run out now, now that I've done it. But uh, it's not its not a good idea. Don't ever try to replicate or to replace uh, new modern AEGs with old ones upgraded if they're a bit odd like this. Maybe if it's more a simple build of a version 2 gearbox. Anything that's a bit strange like this, just steer clear. Let somebody or let somebody else do the work for you. That's another good idea. So that's it, guys. Uh, that is the XCR. So remember, if you like the channel, if you like what we're putting up, please remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up. And secondly, I want to say thank you to my uh, patrons as well. If you are interested in supporting the channel, it really helps. It really keeps us going and keeps us independent as much as possible. Uh, you guys, I couldn't do it without you guys. So. Big thanks out to all my patrons. You really are helping me out. You're a legend. So uh, thanks very much. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.